Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video, we're going to be taking this Next.js application and deploy it up to Vercel, who just happened to be the folks that created Next.js, but besides that, it's an awesome environment to deploy your serverless code up to. So what is this app? As I mentioned, it's Next.js, but I've integrated Google Maps. We can do Google Places search. We'll search for Algonquin Park, bring us in here. And what the app does is when you click on the map, it adds a bear sighting so that you can tell your fellow campers where you've spotted bears so that they can stay clear. But the cool thing about this is that when you refresh, the bear sightings are still here. And that's because we've hooked it up using Prisma 2 to a Postgres database. So I'll link to the video if you're interested in building that part of it. But in this one, we're just focusing on deploying this code up. First things first, you're going to need a Vercel account. I've already set up and I've already integrated this to my GitHub account, which makes it really easy to deploy code up to, which is what we're going to be doing now. So going down to the terminal, I'm going to get out of our dev environment. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually just create a file called vercel.json and just put an empty JSON um, object in here. So when I commit this, so let's add it commit it, um, adding Vercel file. When we push this up to GitHub, um, Vercel is going to detect it because I've done that GitHub integration. And because it sees that this repo has a Vercel.json file, it will know that we want to deploy that code to Vercel. So if I pop back here, already I can see that it's deploying our next Prisma demo. Orange meaning it's building right now. So let's click in here and we can click into deployments and see what is going on. So it's just running the build script. It's creating all of the different pages and serverless uh, functions that this has, as denoted by this little lambda here. And as soon as this is done, this button should uh, turn into visit. Cool. So let's open this. We'll close the local one. And it's sort of busted, right? Like development purposes only, the bears are all gone. Um, so we've got some issues we have to deal with, but you did see that it was working fine locally. So the reason for that is because locally, I'm loading two environment variables that are required for this application to work. The first in .env.local is the Google Maps API key. And the second one for Prisma to work and for it to be able to connect to our database is in here Prisma and then .env. We've got our database URL, which points to the Postgres database that I've got on Heroku. So why Heroku? Well, they have a free Postgres I can use. So that's uh, nice if you just want to get up and running quickly. So we need to get these two environment variables um, onto our Vercel environment. So Vercel has sort of two ways you can do this. The first way is using secrets. Secrets are shared your account wide, meaning if you have 10 different applications deployed there, they're going to be available on all of them. And environment variables are just available for your one project. So that's what we're going to be doing and we're going to be adding them via the Vercel CLI. So to install the CLI, we'll first um, npm install globally Vercel. It should be pretty quick because I've already done it. And then we'll want to say Vercel and add database URL. So the first time you run this, you're going to get this error. Your code base isn't linked to a project. It tells you how to resolve it. You just run Vercel. And we want to set up and deploy this. Yep. So I've got two Vercel accounts, my personal and work. Definitely to the personal. And it already found the one we had deployed up there. So we're going to link it to that. And this will just take a second to build. And then we're ready to go. With the build done, we can now rerun that command to add the environment variable database URL. And what it's going to ask first is the value. So we'll just pop back here, copy and paste that, paste it in. And then it's going to ask me what um, environments I want to add the environment variable to. Vercel comes with three, production, that's sort of the one that would run off of your main or your master branch in GitHub. It's the one sort of that your users would use. Preview is almost like a staging environment that you can set up. I think you have to pay for preview ones, 
um, but also development. So if you just put code, push code to a random branch, that's considered development. I'm going to be using the same environment variables for all three of these, so I'm just going to hit the A key to select them all. And it's going to add it. So now we'll just come back here and we'll add in the other one for the Google Maps API key. So just copy that, paste it in, get the value, paste it in, all environments, and it's done. So you've added your two environment variables. I'll show you where those appear. If we come in here, um, go back to the app, settings, in here, you can see the environment variables. You can add new ones actually from here, but you'd have to add them to all three environments. Uh, you can also remove them from here as well, but uh, you can always check them out here. So one thing we'll touch on a little bit later, uh, these are environment variables available at build and runtime. So we're gonna talk about what the difference is between those two. But first things first, we need to deploy our application again for these to take effect. So you can deploy just by typing in the Vercel command, but if you leave off dash dash prod, it will deploy up as a deployment. Uh, what was that called again? The de yeah, oh sorry, the development environment. But we want to deploy up as the prod environment, so we'll run that. It's going to build our application and deploy it. So with the deploy done to production, we can now go back and refresh the page. And it doesn't work. So why doesn't it work? It works because I'm using, or it doesn't work because I'm using a URL that was specific to the previous deployment. So if we want to get the current deployment, there's a couple ways we can do that. One, uh, they include it right here. So we can just pop this open. And now you can see that uh, the map works, the bears are showing up, which means it's connecting to our database. It has our Google Maps API key. Um, you can also get to that URL just by going back here to the overview. They've got the different uh, URLs here that you can access. And then the, the production one up here at the top. But it's all working. So a couple things I wanted to touch on. I mentioned secrets even though we didn't use them in, in this one. So how can you um, use secrets? The way you use secrets is by defining them in that vercel.json file that I just created empty. You can basically say, I want an environment variable, whatever its name is, and then you use an at symbol and then the secret name. So that's how you sort of access a secret and expose that secret as an environment variable as you deploy. Um, but keep in mind that there's environment variables available in runtime, meaning when serverless functions are called. And then there's environment variables at build time. So what's the difference? Well, think about the two environment variables we have. One points to our database and one um, is the Google Maps key. The Google Maps key, we need sort of publicly exposed. It needs to be available sort of in the browser for our users to access. But the database one, we don't want to expose that because basically you're giving someone the keys to your database to, to do whatever you want. So runtime, those are only available when serverless functions are executed. Build time, those are available as your, your code is sort of building and generating um, the public files that run the Next.js sort of client-side application. But they're not automatically available uh, to your app. So you need a way to basically say, hey, go find this environment variable and build it into my public build of this Next.js app so that it's available in the client in the browser. Because it's not going to do that for every environment variable by default. So remember, we've got the two environment variables. And sort of the easiest way to do it is by adding in this next underscore public underscore to the beginning of any environment variable you want to sort of take during the build process and include it in the public build uh, that's deployed and avail available to anyone sort of within the browser. Because if we were to come in here and inspect the source, look in the head. So right here, it's a little bit small, but 
this is my Google Maps key and it needs to sort of be publicly available, otherwise it, it doesn't work. But the database one you never want in here. So luckily, Next.js, as it's doing the build process to build the public files, it will only include environment variables by default that begin with next underscore public underscore. There is a way to expose sort of other ones that aren't named following this pattern, but you have to get into sort of modifying the Webpack build process to say, go find that um, environment variable and include it in the public build. So this is definitely the easiest way. So I think we're done. Basically, we took the application, we deployed it up to Vercel two ways. We did it via pushing to GitHub. We also did it by running the Vercel dash dash prod command here that kicked off a build. And we added two environment variables and we talked about um, ones we want only available in runtime um, and ones we want to expose uh, through the build process to um, the public build of this application like we wanted with the Google Maps API key. Um, thanks very much. Hope you deploy many applications yourself to Vercel. Take care. Bye.